welcome to Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises an animatic with a little help from our audience. And uh, we learned about storyboarding along the way. Uh, this is an improv art stream which runs on audience suggestions. Mike, what kinds of prompts are we looking for from our audience today? All right, standard Collaboratory, we're looking for three things. We are looking for some compelling characters, we are looking for a setting to place them in, and a interesting conflict. So bring and us what you got. You're... <laughs> awesome. So if you're watching this live on Twitch or on YouTube, please enter your suggestions for characters, a setting, and a conflict in the chat. And whatever you type might just show up on screen. To uh, give our viewers some inspiration, our most recent episode uh, that aired in December was a spy thriller story with a twist ending. And I can't wait to see what our audience comes up with today. Yeah, we've done a lot of different genres, haven't we? <laughs> we've done some really cool stuff. I, I think the highlight for me was that episode with the used car unicorn, um, but also was the, the uh, was it the elf in space? That, that one was fun too. Uh, there are mm -hmm. just so many different directions that the show can go in. Well, when you have an open canvas like this, um, it really helps. Um, you know, and having an open canvas here in Storybook Pro is also very helpful as well. You can go outside yeah. the margins and not have to worry about it. While we wait for suggestions to come in, I just want to take a second to ask you, uh, Mike, what went well for you in 2021? Oh, not having to commute to work was pretty great. Um, I, I do enjoy a 30 second commute from my bedroom to my office. So, I mean, if it's even 30 seconds, it's probably only like 10 or 15. So, but you, you uh, need a really short podcast for that commute. You do. You do. It's really, you know, it's only several words long. It's basically, we are a podcast, and then you're to your office. So, you can shut it down. Yeah, you just um, get like one uh, Squarespace ad and uh, something about Casper mattresses. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, 2021, I think, and over the last couple of years, I feel like ever since uh, this pandemic has been going on, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to sort of focus on artistic stuff. Um, and maybe... I don't know. Sometimes I feel like maybe the well runs, a little, the inspiration well runs a little dry because you're not having as many like experiences, which is where a lot of really good art comes from is just personal experience. Um, but uh, yeah, 2021, I mean, it's been productive. Yeah. Uh, when I think of the past year, uh, aside from the collaboratory episode with the used car unicorn, uh, I was really excited to have a chance to interview Jason Walling and Brandon Berger about the character rigs Ooh. in America, the motion picture. And uh, that interview's up on our blog if anyone wants to read it. They're both very forthcoming about the development process behind the rigs, their approach to character animation, and how the animated scenes that were really like crazy to do in 2D animation. Yeah, I can imagine. All right, Those rigs did some... look really prolific, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they're really impressive. Uh, so we're getting a few suggestions in the chat. Uh, one is a ninja trying to be a ninja. Uh, second is a blind ninja that no one takes seriously, and somehow they're still successful. Uh, so th that's kind of like a Zatoshi story, I think. Well, you know, we're using a streaming thing called Video Ninja. So, I mean, that's pretty appropriate. Let's see, what else we got there? We got ninjas. What else we got? So maybe we can make one of those characters a ninja, and then we need somebody else to counterplay off of. We got a suggestion for a snowman and a dog. Snowman and a dog. Um, so, uh, um, so we have ninja, blind ninja, snowman, and dog. Okay, we need a, a setting still, and we need a conflict. What's what's going on between these guys? What kind of dog? That dog is is a pretty, uh, pretty nebulous thing. I mean, you could have like a, you know, a, as small as a, you know, a 
toy chihuahua or something like that. It's big as a mastiff. Yeah, there's a big range in dog. Or uh, like one of those, um, you know, English hounds, the, the big ones. So you're looking for more of the, the, the droopy style dog. Droopy? Like, hello. That guy? Like, you know, the... Oh, now that you mention it, yeah, uh, but I, I'm, I'm just thinking too, in terms of like an old English hound, they tend to, uh, gravity tends to affect them a lot. I don't know if I've ever drawn droopy. Can't say that I ever have. It's probably not a very good droopy at all. Okay, we've got uh, some more suggestions coming in. We've got uh, a street fighter. Uh, so maybe that is a, a character, or maybe that's a setting or conflict, you know, sort of like... Um, like a Street uh, Fighter tournament? Game. Ho, ho, ho. And uh, another, <laughs> another option is a cyberpunk kind of world. Street Street Fighter tournament, cyberpunk world with snowman and dog at versus ninja, versus blind ninja. It's a lot of different directions uh, that we're being pulled into. Uh, another uh, suggestion is uh, Santa's workshop as a reveal setting. Uh, so I guess we don't know that we're in Santa's workshop, and then we are there. <laughs> in the dark underbelly of Santa's workshop is cyberpunk. Ooh, I, I, I like this. Street fighting. <laughs> It's it's all contained in Santa's snow globe, because Santa really likes street fights. Um, who, who will be the um, uh, the Christmas gift of the season? Yeah, that's that's good. Okay, so I, I, I'm digging the Cyberpunk Street Fighter. Um, oh yeah, let's just do it. Cyberpunk Street Fighter with a uh, snowman dog. Dog and Snowman and uh, Blind Ninja. How about we do that? That sounds pretty cool. All right, yeah. Okay. So um, I think that, I mean, we have started a lot of these collaboratories with um, establishers, but I think I think what's a, a good play in this particular one is to start with um, a close-up, right? I think, so I think the media res. The close-up is kind of where we need to to start here. Um, turn up my brush size to and uh, let's give him like a really like messed up like cut thing over his eye. has no real eyebrows because they were burned off years ago but not from fire from extreme cold that seems more mortal combat than street fighter well i'm you know there's a lot of those ninjas out there in the it's mortal true, combat it's true. but we didn't say it was like technically a street fighter street fighter thing we just you know, it's a street it's fight. So, but who knows? Or, he could uh, be Lin, he could be Lin Kuei. Below one degree. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, just below zero. And that's why this is a vendetta match against this snowman, because he despises all things super cold. There is the possibility this is just like the child of a ninja and a pirate, you know, forbidden love uh, sort of thing. And uh, that's that's why there's the, the one eye. Well, are they natural enemies? Are we going to... I think so. One collaboratory will have to do like, uh, I don't know, like Pirate Ninja West Side Story. Is that what you're trying to tell me? I, I would love to see a Pirate Ninja West Side Story. That would be great. Just a bunch of ninjas snapping. And like every time they snap, they disappear and a log just shows up in their place. Mm. <laughs> and by the end of the song, there's just a giant pile of wood. That is that is all of the ninja tropes. And they're just throwing stars everywhere. All over the place. Scattered all about.
I'm probably doing that in the most inefficient way possible. Just realize. Yeah, it looks really cool though. I like the little like rim light on the uh, the ninja. Yeah, well, it's always good to have a little bit of something like that when you're doing um, uh, something with like darker colors, because it helps to break up the space, right? So we have this guy, and we're just going to um, you know, put him on the wrong I'm on actual character layer. In the background, we'll just have the um, some sort of simplistic background. So get my brushes back out. There we go. Have hey Mike, we're getting some questions about uh, shows that you've worked on. Do you want to just run through some of the uh, the, the projects that you've done? Oh um, well, I started out on The Simpsons um, back when I got out of school in 2006, and then I after that um, I did a little bit of work as an intern on Princess and the Frog, um, and then from there I went back to The Simpsons for a few more years, and then. From there, I went to work on a show at Disney Television called Future Worm, which lasted for uh, a little while. And then some development of Warner Brothers on Yabba Dabba Dinos. Um, they, we, all of what we did got totally changed, but that's okay. Um, then I went on to uh, the 2017 DuckTales, and then from there on to Fox's House Broken. And now I work on um, Mulligan at Bento Box for Netflix. Those are some really cool shows. Thanks, man. All right, let's just give him a little bit of a angry squint, right? Just tilt down that a little bit so we have this. And I also feel like uh, Princess and the Frog is is a movie that uh, more people need to see. I, I love theatrical uh, 2D animation. Me too, you know, and... You know, to, to Tim Boom's credit, that's what uh, we were using to, to color everything with was Harmony. So there was actually a lot of animation done within Harmony on that on that movie, um, especially with some of the trickier shots. Like uh, there's a gentleman, uh, Mr. T. Dan Hofstede, who uh, I was working with a little bit here and there at the time and is a good friend. Uh, he was doing this one big shot with a bunch of the voodoo dolls banging on drums. It's a, It was like a long shot going through it. And that was all done in harmony. Okay, so here we go. We got that nice squint going on. Oh, that works. And then I, I think we need to um, get a shot where we see... Um, you know, uh, I think we need to go a little bit wider on, on this guy and see, like... Yeah. So the the ninja has, like, a very, like, realistic um, art style, uh, very detailed. I feel like the snowman has to be, like, for contrast, uh, super cartoony. Sure, we can do that. So uh, what's, a, what's a good weapon to, to give him? Um, yeah, I mean, chat, we are looking like for the ninja weapon. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, something on a chain is always kind of fun. Yeah, I think that I think that's fun too. Um, but let's see what the chat comes up with, and we'll. Yeah. So, uh, we'll so chat uh, should our ninja wield? Let's give that a little bit of a. I feel like really cameras are a weapon you don't see ninjas use very often. Oh, and good reason. They're big and they're heavy. Makes you <laughs> makes you slow. <laughs> that's that's the kind of weapon for somebody who is fighting from a, uh, a base of operation, right? So I think it'd be cool to give this background here a little bit of a treatment. Um. Okay, we've got some uh, suggestions. We've got uh, a carrot, which I think would be very on brand for fighting a um, 
a snowman, you know, that if I've <laughs> t- taken this from one of your um, companions and, and now I'll use it to end you. Uh, another option is a lightning sword, uh, which um, just sounds like a really cool thing to draw. Well, it is, and we are in cyberpunk world after all. Yeah, so a cyberpunk ninja would probably have a lightning sword. Or at least some sort of electrical-based weapon. That sounds that sounds pretty cool, like a, a, a power katana or power ninja toe. Uh, so maybe we'll put uh, a sword right here, put swords, give them multiples. Um, and then we need a, a little bit of an arena of some kind, right? She, you know, maybe, well, it is a street fight, so should it just be, like, on some, some sort of, like, uh, street uh, area? Like, a little bit of um, uh, Blade Runner-esque? And just have, like, people all around. Maybe there's some sort of building right here, and some like um very like okay we got a suggestion in the chat uh from rebecca cartsmark asking how about a lightning carrot sword a lightning carrot sword. now you're just going meta on it i don't know uh, this is coming from like talented mercury film work so i feel like uh that, that that's, a, that's a hard suggestion to pass up all right all right for you i will do it it's also a great source of vitamin a so we're going to need some people in the foreground here and and some other folks. With crowds, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to get through it. Um, and maybe there is, like, some sort of vehicle or something like that that more people are up here on. You know, some people that are, like, sitting on some stuff up here. Hey, you always then, have people cheering in the background, right? Yeah. And then the city, because, you know, cyberpunk's stuff doesn't happen in the country. That's steampunk. <laughs> Some of that happens the in the country. The idea of like, a country cyberpunk sort of situation, right, where you have... Um, uh, you know, the syndicates uh, leaning on pumpkin farmers. But how can it be developed enough? Used to be uh, developed. You could have Cyberpunk like, happens robot in... tractors doing everything. <laughs> it, it, it's true. You need to have like a, a gray cityscape for it to really work. Yeah, I mean, I know I don't know what what the situation of the punks in the country, but uh, I don't think it's a it's a wildly huge occurrence. All right, so we also need a little bit of tone in here to help differentiate our characters and such. Um, what was the name of, of the lady who wanted to do the uh, to do this um, electric carrot sword? That would be Rebecca Cardsmark. Rebecca Cardsmark. Okay, thank you for your suggestion, who, Rebecca. I think I'll be interviewing uh, in a couple weeks about uh, her project with Mercury Filmworks, the oh, um, excellent. Mercury Shorts. Really Wonderful. Cool I look forward to, to seeing that. So I'll just fill that in too, and then we'll just give the our, our ninja friend here a little bit of a, a tone on top of that so we can differentiate him from the crowd. I love how right. just a little bit of tone can make a huge difference. Oh, absolutely. Huge, huge, huge difference. Okay. Um, I, I think also we need to, to introduce a challenger right here. And... Um, Let's see. Get back to the brush we were using before. Gotta make it bigger. Mm. No, I don't think we're gonna do arms like that. We're gonna make the arms Chat, kind can of I, beefy. Can uh, I ask you for suggestions for design elements on the snowman? Here 
we go. Boop, 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 boop. Let's give us oh, I like the, uh, the sort of gnarled wooden hand. That's uh, that's fun. Okay, now that needs a little bit of tone as well. So keep the the draw behind on, and let's pop some tone in there. Now, one one trick to know is if you're going to do things in multiple tones, always do what's going to show up on top first because it's always going to draw behind. Yeah. So if I'm, I'm going to do this in a two-tone way, put some of this right here, some of that right there, like that, and then I can follow up with this other tone. Do it that that if my good. tones are a little off, I can always just use my color selector and just lighten it up a little bit. So there we go. Um, and of course, we're going to add some fun little arrows to have this come in. Small indication. In. We can't really read that. Mike, we, we got a again. question in the chat that uh, I thought you might be interested in. Uh, how do you deal with fatigue and what can you suggest to other borders? Uh, so uh, what kind of fatigue? Because there's I, lots. There's I physical think, fatigue. There's yeah. mental fatigue. There's creative fatigue. Which kind of fatigue are you referring to? Speaking of physical fatigue, I've just been uh, sitting on my uh, leg and it has fallen asleep. So I'm just gonna <laughs> move around a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, I th I think what might be kind of fun here actually. Oh, we have, have some suggestions, actually. Um, so uh, for the snowmen, uh, one suggestion in the chat from uh, Vert MB is uh, snowmen have buttons. What if this one had a zipper? And uh, Rebecca is suggesting a really tiny head. Um, another suggestion, uh, oh, physical and mental fatigue. I think that is a clarification on the question and not for the snowman. But uh, it would be also interesting if the snowman had both physical and mental fatigue. <laughs> Well, he's about to go into a fight, so I hope he's not physically fatigued. Yeah. All right. And um, let's see. Let's give him this is a nice little upshot of Snowman. Let's get that bigger brush out here. Oh, Snowman looks really jolly. And then, you know, I think I think a classic hat. Um, maybe a small nose. Like one thick, giant branch of an arm, and then one that's like thinner. Oh, yeah, a little bit of asymmetry. And have him, um, let's see, I, I think maybe he needs to have, like, some people behind him like this, and then some sort of lattice work of, like, construction or something that's torn down, or, you know, maybe some people, like, behind in the general background. Sometimes when I thumbnail, I end up doing everything all in the same layer and then splitting it up after the fact. Which, you know, you can do. Um, it's easy when, when you're working in Vector. All these are people. And of course, we have the people that are kind of a little higher on stuff. And we, we make a nice uh, balanced composition that way. And then have maybe some elements of the background that are leading your eye toward this character. Maybe that's a little heavy-handed there. We'll, we'll tone that, this part of it back a little bit. There we go. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's split this up into multiple panels. And then we'll have, um, we'll go to the character layer and we will change our 
um, our rotation point. Uh, what would you? What was it? The anchor point, right? Is that the official title of uh, that name? Anchor point, I think, is the uh, the the official term. Yeah. So another no, trick uh, is to point, maybe. Another thing is to take your pivot point and move it in um, a direction that is appropriate for the perspective you're going for. And um, that sometimes will help just with scaling stuff easily. All right, and let's let's do a little bit of a, a shadow reveal. Let's see him just coming out of the shadows a little bit. So going from like silhouette to uh... partially. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and maybe there's some sort of like electronic voice like <laughs> fight <laughs> prepare to die you know like really happy um oh, but i think I, also i, I, think I was also thinking more like welcome to your doom <laughs> yeah <laughs> just really like really sweet and happy and I think maybe we need like a like a neck cracking like that. And, it's... and then um, we're gonna go back to this one, duplicate that layer, and have it go the other way now. Oops. We need to put in our tones. So let's do this. We'll select by color, copy it. We're going to go to the one that doesn't have it, paste it. We're pasting it on top, sure. But again, we're going to just select the color and copy and paste right back over. So now we're in the same spot again. We have saved the tone. Um, okay, then I'm going to go back to this one again, and I'm going to um, take that, put it at the end. And I think now he should have like uh, just a reset of that motion. And then um, maybe we do something where like his head spins around in a whole 360. Yeah, I like the sound of that. It sounds really creepy. <laughs> So we can get rid of this stuff here and um, have it have it just be like uh, let's that, we'll turn the draw behind off, and then put in like some spinning stuff, some multiples. Um, one thing that you can do to sell multiples like this in an animatic is just a, a two frame cycle, you know. You just gather up some of these. Yeah, I, I love uh, smear frames and multiples. Uh, they're just fun things to see in animation, even though they tend to only show up for just a frame or two. Well, they don't work if they're if they're more than a frame or two. Yeah, yeah. Like they're those are those are uh, impact drawings. They're not. They're meant to be felt, not to be seen. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can just. Let's just take this and we'll flop that and sort of put it in the same position. So we have like two drawings for that. Sometimes it's as simple as just, you know, flopping some some artwork here and there. Again, you know, we're we're doing storyboards. This is pre-production for the final. And then the animation the animators can uh, you know figure out how to make that cycle really work well. Um, but yeah, of course, also it's important when you're storyboarding to to do your due diligence. You know, you're setting the foundation of a show, and so you want to set up the strongest foundation that you possibly can because everybody who follows up with you know with the stuff that you've done, that is going to show up on screen. And so, if you're not setting things up properly from the get go, you know, you're basically passing the buck on to somebody else who's going to have to fix it later on. So, you know, be, be conscious and cognizant of that when you're boarding. So, I think it's working all right. 
So, <laughs> so let's copy that. So copy, and then paste, paste, paste. Of course, we'll just shrink that those down. If we were doing an automatic properly, we would, you know, sit down and time this thing. I feel um, like you've just created a new SCP. <laughs> a new what? Uh, so th there's this thing called the SCP Foundation where they, it's like Wikipedia, but for creepy things. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I just, I feel like this is uh, an extremely cursed character and I, I am here for it. Wasn't there like a fighting game in like the 90s or something like that? That one of them was, it was a clay fighter maybe? Yeah, that was clay fighter. Uh, and I think one of the uh, the fighters was a snowman. Yeah. So for those of you in the chat who want to go look up Clay Fighter and, and uh, confirm yeah, our it's, suspicions. It's a weird game. <laughs> okay, so we've got crack, 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 spin, 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 woof. And then I think even more so what we're going to do after this is um, this head's going to explode. <laughs> So, you know, the head's going to explode. Um, the hat's going to go flying off, of course. And another uh, fun little trick also is you can just give, like, the body a little, a little bit of something. Now just a little skew, and then dip it a bit. So we feel, you know. That's a really fun detail. Well, you know, it, it, little things often are just enough to sell the idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it, it, sometimes you have to like fully draw it out and everything, but you know, sometimes you don't. And um, it's finding those spots where you don't that's going to save you a little bit of time and uh, make sure that you're hitting your deadlines properly. So, and then the head's coming off. Um, and then we're, we're going to go back to this original one here because we've got the right body position there. And we're going to put it at the end. And um, underneath this head is dog what sort of dog did you uh, decide on corgi okay yeah that's uh it's a classic dog little dog well, in, in, in uh big dog in a little dog's body in honor in honor of uh of my friend pam Who's all about Courtney's? So maybe we'll put like some controls or something like that in his hands. go and i think uh we just need like a little something like this and we'll just tip this head up a little bit tilt and shift It works pretty nicely when you can just shift some pieces around here and there. Woof. Go back to here. Duplicate. Pull over. And um, he's gonna he's gonna do a little classic kung fu move. Well, I guess made popular. By, by Bruce Lee. Right, no. 
notes. He's going to hold out his paw like this. Duplicate. And then he's going to I need to clear the silhouette there. Sometimes you need to zoom in to do that. Get that nice, this, you know, skewing motion in there. Going to have his arm past the joystick part. Okay, I think I see a suggestion for a finisher move, which is uh, unzip the corgi. Unzip the corgi. <laughs> huh? Hey, could happen. All right, so um, you know, sometimes it, it would be sometimes it's pretty cool to have. Um, like a nice overhead shot for, you know, to sort of establish your geography here. We've got a crowd, a crowd of people. We've got streets. And I think, you know, on the top, we can do some really cool foreground elements. We'll beef up our brush fairly large and have, like, you know, some sort of, like, beam work or, you know, some sort of um, – techno looking thing to make it seem like it's um you know kind of all around you, you would do that in layers um and you can do like a 3d shot that would you know make things look really cool when you're you know zooming the camera in and out um, we haven't really done that on the show uh, because it, it does take time but um that is some cool stuff that you can do when you're working on projects so we'll just do like generic crowd. It's just a bunch and bunch and bunch of people. And of course, given time, we could flesh this out and make it look super cool, but um, we just don't have that sort of time on the show, unfortunately. Maybe, we f maybe we'll do a special at some point where we go for a few more hours. Yeah, it'd be fun also to revisit some of these too. Uh, this is a really good suggestion. Uh, so multiple corgis come flying at once and zipped. So the the snowman could just be like a trench coat full of corgis. <laughs> it's like a corgi cannon. Oh, love it. I think one really cool thing uh, to do with fight scenes is to give the audience like a, a view of the layout of the sense of space. Because uh, if you don't, then uh, things get really confusing. You don't really know what's happening. Well, geography, setting up geography visually is so, so, so important because that is one of the quickest ways to lose an audience, right? Because if they see stuff that's not visually uh, continuous, um, then they're like, wait, what's going on and then you've lost the audience and then you got to get them back you don't ever want to lose the audience because it's difficult to get them back and you've lost some storytelling time with them because they're looking at the filmmaking not looking at the film yeah and i think also being able to see like how the characters are acting and reacting to things around them is important totally All right, so we have this setup, and you know we can put like a little uh, camera thing on it, um, a, a good little rotate. I think uh, sometimes can go pretty far. So a nice little drift, like that, and you know let's even do a drift pull out, so we can have that, you know. That sort of thing. And again, it'd be really cool if we could do like the 3D stuff and put that in there. 
Um, we are getting questions uh, about like how uh, you deal with like mental or creative fatigue. Uh, was there anything that you wanted to uh, give as maybe suggestions that might be helpful? I, I know you've suggested uh, sometimes going outside is a, a helpful thing. Going outside? Yeah, experiencing yeah. nature, experiencing the world. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's totally good. Um, there's, I have a few suggestions that I try to do whenever um, I have mental fatigue, you know, and um, I don't think it's any secret that, um, you know, I'm a tabletop gamer and sometimes I focus that creativity there and just start writing stuff. You can always switch up your art a little bit and um, I find that if I go into like, you know, drawing in VR or um, doing some writing or, you know, uh, getting out some clay or something like that, just like mixing things up um, and giving yourself a little variety. I think that and gets often... you excited about making things again. Huh? Gets you excited about making things again, do something different. Yeah, exactly. It gets you excited about, you know, a lot of different things. Like lately I've been putting together uh, some stuff that I've been 3D printing and, um, you know, modifying some existing 3D models to make some cool stuff. Um, you know, if I may just indulge myself for a second. Yeah. Like, I've been printing this thing right here. <laughs> and uh, it's taken a while, but, you know, it's a creative endeavor that I enjoy. And, um, you know, that is all, a huge all, print. all credit. Oh, yeah, it's a very big one. Um, all, all credit goes to different artists who did the main groundwork, uh, Miguel Zavala and some other various people that I've, you know, been kind of hodgepodging that model together with, but it's a fun endeavor that I like that helps me recharge my batteries as far as creatively goes. And sometimes you'll just get streaks of inspiration. And you just have to go with it. Um, but another thing that I can say is, um, and I'm not the best at this, um, but just gets in getting some a good amount of rest. You know, sleep when you need to sleep. And um, you know, don't don't push yourself over the over the limit so where your your brain isn't operating at its peak capacity, you know. Yeah, whenever I'm having trouble thinking, it's sort of like, hey, did I get enough sleep? Did I drink enough water? Um, did I not drink coffee today? Uh, just the sort of basic checklist of uh, what's what's going on. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't like this shot so far. I don't think so. We have this upshot. We have this other thing, and I think we need. Um, I think we also need a, an upshot for this ninja, but a little bit differently. I think we need something like this where we where we're seeing him from underneath and maybe reaching up behind him and of course again this is going to be a, a derpy derpy drawing because these sort of shots do usually take a little bit longer to compose um and and make it look appropriate it's sort of the the drawing the sword sort of shing uh. yeah and he's got the sash that comes down right here and then we can make his arm a little bit a little bit bigger throw that way up and again, this this would go over a couple different layout passes. So, you know, when you're drawing and, and you're trying to do tricky shots, like just be patient with yourself and you'll you'll figure it out over time. I think a lot of us get this idea that um, I must be, you know, I have ultimate perfection at all times. And um, that's just not going to ever be realistic. So... You know, there are there are times where you just take your time and figure things out, and then once you've got it figured out, go forward. Um, but you know, give yourself a break, and and that will help with mental fatigue. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. If anyone else has any tips on uh, dealing with mental fatigue, you can definitely share them in the chat. We can take a look. Um, there's no one right or wrong answer. It's sort of whatever works for you. Yeah, absolutely. Tell tell us your secrets. Tell us, uh, you know, things that help you. And I think that, you know, that brings me to another thing. I feel like so many people um, labor under this idea that their problems are all unique to themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, that is also a... Uh, a huge fallacy as far as just life goes, right? And here we're going to do a little bit of a stretch multiple drawing. Drawing the sword. I'm just going to put that right there. So it's a very short period of time. And then he's going to yeah, have... I know that a lot of people um, during 2020, 2021, now 2022... Uh, there's a feeling that you're sort of working all the time and that can be fatiguing. Sure. Well, I get that. Yeah, I totally get it. I think one of the things working from home is that you're never away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, it's just always there. And, um, that's something that, you know, I, I've, I've freelanced from home uh, a few times in my life and, um, there is that ever presence of work being there all the time. Yeah, I've heard a few people recommend that egg timer method where uh, every time you sort of set it up, every time it rings, you get up and uh, do something else for a little bit. Uh, sure. That sounds like a good good plan. Um, getting a little bit of exercise. Thank you. I'm going to take this here, and I'm just going to move it to the side. Boosh. And then I'm going to take this over here and move that to the side. Give it a nice clean split, and then we can have, like, this little area in the middle. And then that's all going to be, like, electrified. Oh, another thing we need to do with this sword is it needs to have the, the like, carrot greens. Carrot top. It's got to have the greens. Uh, let's go and put the carrot. I think, you know what? Sometimes you just need to dip into the color. And uh, <laughs> to, just for clarity's sake, you know, I know there's yellow carrots and at? white it's carrots orange. and purple it's a carrots. Carrot. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, we're showing deference to the. Is it the king of Denmark? That's the reason we have orange carrots. I don't know. Or is that apocryphal? <laughs> I have no idea. That's the first I've ever heard of that. So um, I'm going to defer to you on that. Again, the chat can help us out and, and solve our problems for us, please. So I think maybe blue electricity in this case, I think might work a little bit better. Get some complimentary color going. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it could be... Like a, a like a yellow sort of electricity, but we gotta make sure that it looks like it's got some electrical current going on. Okay, um, and then some small background elements. Even if you only have a little bit of background, you know, for a shot, a, every little bit helps because you yeah. still want to make sure that. The audience knows where they are, that, you know, you know where you are when, when it comes to boards. And you can always do, like, a map. Like, if we go back to this one, we can have, like, a map on the side. And you can say, well, this guy starts here. This is position one. Then he's going to dart over here to position two. Camera is going to follow him here. So we, we see him like slash past the guy. Um, and you can sort of use colors and, and different things to delineate all of that and plan out your animation um, or plan out your film cinematography. And you absolutely should. Um, it's going to save you a lot of headaches later. More planning in the beginning helps you execute all that much more efficiently. 
on the back end. So we have about seven minutes left. Uh, do you want to do a quick run through of the uh, the boards? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, close up on blind eyed ninja. He squints ominously. Cut out to see that he is in a cyberpunk sort of situation, and um, you know, honestly, this we could do a lot more with some of this stuff, and it makes a really cool uh, like cinematography given more time. But since we're just sort of you know pushing through really fast, sometimes we're going to rely on a little bit more basic shots. All right, coming in is this beefy looking wooden arm with gnarled fingers. Stepping into the light is a snowman with a zipper. Crack, crack of the neck. And then spin, spin, spin to the head, and then boosh, revealing Cyber Corgi, who unceremoniously barks. Says, bring it on, sucker. His body language. And we go to this overhead shot. And we're hearing the the fight music. You know, Mike, give us some fight music. Do 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 do. <laughs> fight music, not elevator music. Come on. Uh, I can only do music. Oh, okay. Well, that's fair enough. All right. And then, so the ninja responds by pulling out his carrot sword, which is electrified. And I think as one more parting thing for this board. We are going to have him dash off. No, All right. Uh, so I. I know that sometimes ninjas, it would be cool to have a sword trailing right here, but uh, maybe we'll have him do this. See the sword trailing here. Like he's about to strike. Yeah. Actually, I don't need to draw it because I already have it drawn. So I'm just going to go back to the panel. Snag all this good stuff here. You just good old fashioned paste it. Wrote it. And the fight will begin. Through all right, blank. Mike, thank you so much for uh, this amazing storyboard. Do you have any projects or topics you'd like to draw our audience's attention to? Well, there will be uh, more info coming in the future, but uh, right now I'm in the middle of planning a portfolio review event. So as that uh, materializes and more information comes forward, um, we'll be sure to let you know. Yeah, well, the portfolio reviews are so important, so I'm, I'm really excited to see that. Um, I would just like to briefly congratulate the artists at Titmouse's New York studio and joining the Animation Guild. Good job. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us for Collaboratory today. If you'd like to try your hand at storyboarding, you can download a 21-day trial of Storyboard Pro from our website at toonboom.com. Today, Mike Morris drew a ninja fighting a snowman. So just think about what kinds of stories you could tell in three weeks. And uh, this Thursday on our live stream, we'll be speaking with Nico Coleo about his independent web series, Ollie and Scoops. If you're curious about starting your own series, you won't want to miss it. So be sure to tune in next time.